Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Baron Park. Now, Baron Park is a game by Phil Walker Harding and was published by Mayfair Games and Lookout Games. Baron Park is a game uh, that is very puzzly. It's about uh, you use pieces that are shaped like Tetris blocks to create a bear zoo. And the, the game is listed as being a two to four player game for, for 30 to 45 minutes and for ages eight and up. So I'd like to start there. Now, in regard to the two to four players, this game plays just as well at two players as four players. There's really not a whole lot to talk about there. It's, it plays the same because there's very little interaction between you and the other players. Um, and the mechanics do not change at all based on how many players you're playing. Everybody's building their own bear park, and there's really not any take that element. The only thing you can do to really affect other people is to take pieces that they might have wanted to use. Now, in regard to the 30 to 45 minutes, that's a pretty good estimate. It can go a little longer than that in a four-player game, but usually under an hour. Now, as for the ages eight and up, that is also a fairly good estimate. Though, believe it or not, uh, a kid who routinely gets games a year or two above their age range that is a little bit younger than eight might even be able to get this. The The rules are not severely complex. And if you play board games with your children a lot, this might actually be okay for a seven-year-old. Now, let's open it up and have a look at what comes inside the box for Baron Park. So the first thing you've got inside the box for Baron Park is the rules. Now, the, the rules are a fold-out... Uh, six page total sheet that is full color tons of diagrams this is a very excellently done rule book this is everything i want in a rule book it teaches you how to play very quickly there are no ambiguities and the diagrams are great so i have nothing bad to say about this rule book the next thing we have here is the board now the board uh which they totally didn't need to do has a picture of bear paws on the back of it which is just really cute and fun and the board itself looks like construction schematics drawn by a child, which is hilarious. It's got areas for all of the different shaped tiles to place them. And in addition, there's little doodles on it of all different sorts of construction equipment and bears between each of the areas. Now, the board is really just a placeholder for the pieces. So let's move on to the pieces. Now, the pieces, you've got your base area, which has the name Bear Park in a, a couple of different languages, depending on which side you want to put it on. They have all different countries to choose from, lots of different languages. And uh, for instance, here is Japanese. So now you start with one of these and you slowly build the bear park by placing the Tetris like pieces, which you can see lots of here in the box and expanding and uh, eventually getting even more tiles. These are tiles that do not have an entrance on them to eventually have four full size tiles covered completely in these Tetris like tiles. Now, as you place these, you cover up areas, and as you cover up the specific symbols, like the different bits of construction equipment and the construction crews, those allow you to get more tiles. So the, the wheelbarrows, the cement trucks, and the earth movers allow you to get uh, the shaped tiles, the, the wheelbarrows get the smallest group of these, while the cement truck is the next largest, the, and the uh, Earth Mover gets the largest ones of these, which can cover up the largest amounts of space. And the construction crew allows you to get a whole nother park tile so you can expand your park. The first person to get four park tiles out and, and fully covered is going to start the last round. And then whoever gets the most points based on what they placed on the park is going to be the winner. So that's basically everything that comes in the box. Uh, there's lots of different shaped tiles here, but it doesn't really pay to take them all out. Uh, I'm going to take you over to the table now, and I'm going to show you how a game of this plays. We're going to run through a few rounds, and then we're going to come back. I'm going to talk about how this game feels. I'm going to rate it and review it, and then we're going to get a second opinion from Lynn. 
Okay, so here we can see a setup for a two-player game of Baron Park. Now, the only difference uh, based on how many players you're playing is what tiles you're using. So in a two-player game, there are less tiles of the food streets and the river bends, as well as less tiles used of each of the bear habitats and less of the bear statues being used. You use all of the tiles when you play four players, and you use a little less and even even less when using three and two players respectively. Now each player gets a random starting park. Uh, this will be my starting one with all of its symbols here. And the first player takes a free bathroom tile to start with while the second player takes a free uh, park tile to start with, a little playground. Now, if you were playing with more players, the third one would take a, another playground and the fourth one would actually get a food street. So, get, so it counterbalances the benefit of going first because a bathroom only takes up one square, whereas Lynn's playground there takes up two squares. Now, on your turn, the first thing you always need to do is play a tile. You cannot cover this roped off area because that is reserved for a statue, but you can start for your first tile anywhere else, though later tiles must be placed orthogonally adjacent to tiles you have already placed on the board, so they have to share a side with them. In addition, they cannot hang over the edge of the board and they cannot cover tiles you have already played. Otherwise, you can flip them and turn them to your heart's content. When you're placing new tiles, like these, for covering construction crews, you can place them on any side of the tiles you've already placed, but they can never be below the entrance of the park, uh, and the symbols on them must be right side up from your perspective when you place them there. Once you've placed a tile, the next thing you do is you check which tiles you covered, and you get tiles to place next to your board from the uh, reserve over here, based on what's, what symbols you covered, and then, you, if you have finished completely covering one of your park tiles, you get to place the most valuable bear statue on that park tile. And again, the next player goes. Once someone completely covers four park tiles and completely finishes their park, all other players get one more turn. And then you count up the points, which are listed on the actual tiles. Um, the These tiles are no points and these tiles are worth the points that are actually written on them as well as the bear statues themselves are have their point value written on them. So let's run you through a few turns and we'll show you kind of how this goes. So for my first turn, I get to place one of these and I really want to place it somewhere that's going to get me a, a sizable tile to continue playing with. So I'm going to cover this white cement truck here that is down in the bottom corner of my area because that will immediately get me a large tile that I will be able to place. So I'm going to take, um, I've decided that I am going to take this polar bear habitat for covering that. So I'm going to place it there and that's it for me. I am all done. So now it is Lynn's turn. I'm going to cover a cement truck too. Okay. And take this bear. Uh, the Gobi Bear Habitat. So now I am going to place this Polar Bear Habitat covering these two green wheelbarrows over here, which means I'm going to get to take not one, but two of the uh, possible green spaces here. So I'm going to take a food street as well as a river bend. I'm going to cover a wheelbarrow. Okay. And I'm going to take a river. Fair enough. I'm going to, let's see here. I'm going to place here, which actually covers nothing, but does cover up a lot of squares, and then I am done. I'm going to cover a wheelbarrow and a construction crew. Fair enough. So I'm going to I'm gonna pick one of these first. Okay. I'm gonna take this one. Okay. And for my wheelbarrow, I will take a food street. Okay, now I'm going to place this river bend here so it covers a white cement truck and a wheelbarrow. 
for the white cement truck, I'm going to take the koala habitat. Now the koala habitat is still worth six points because no one's taken any of those yet. I do want to draw attention to that since uh, I took a polar bear house and Lynn took a goby bear house. Both of those have now gone down to only a value of four points. So this one is still much more valuable. So I'm going to take that and for my green space, I am going to take a food street. I am going to cover up a earth mover guy. Ah, so you can take anything. Very nice. And I'm going to take... And that'll take one of the big ones there, yeah. I'm going to take this guy. That one's huge. Okay, so I'm going to play the, the finish covering up my first tile here with this uh, koala bear habitat, which also covers a construction crew. So covering the construction crew means I get to take one more of these. So I'm going to take this one here and place it like so. And then it also means, I, because I fully covered my first tile, I get to get the most valuable bear statue. The most valuable bear statue is currently a 16-point bear statue, which now gets placed for free in that spot because I have fully covered it. Uh, that was it, and now I am done with my turn. I'm going to place this guy here, covering a wheelbarrow and a cement truck. Oh, very nice. So I'm going to take a playground and a panda. Okay, so I'm going to place this piece here covering, a, covering an earth mover and another construction crew. So for the other construction crew, I'm gonna take this park area here and for the earth mover, now I can take one of these nice, big, very valuable uh, pieces here. So I'm gonna look to try to take uh, one of the most valuable ones possible. There's a lot of eight value construction crews in there. And I am going to take one of the eights. I'm going to take this one here. And that's it for my turn. I'm just going to fill up my first tile. It doesn't cover anything but I get the bear statue. And there you go. And that's how this game plays. We go back and forth again until somebody fully fills up four park tiles. And once they do, all other players, or in this case, just the one other player, gets one more turn. And then at the end, we count up all our points for the tiles we placed, and whoever has the most points wins the game of Baron Park. So one quick note I want to draw attention to is the game does come with a extra more advanced rule if you want to make this game a little more complicated because the basic game is very simple and very easy to play. But there is a more advanced rule with achievements that you can get which will get you bonus points. So that's everything. Now we're going to head back over. I'm going to review this game and rate it, talk about how it feels, and then we're going to get a second opinion from Lynn. All right, so that was how you play a game of Baron Park. Now, Baron Park is crazy fun, and this is a nice, lighter middleweight game that, that is really easy for anyone to pick up and play. I have yet to have a game where anyone said they didn't like this game, and I really enjoy this game. And it, First off, one thing I really want to talk about is this game is so puzzly in nature. The, the way you have to try to plan ahead and, and you want to try to puzzle out ways to use the largest possible tiles because they cover the most space, but you have to make sure not to get, you know, have them hanging over the board and your decision on when to cover the work crew so you can get another tile so you can have tiles going across multiple big park tiles. It's just really, really cool because there is a big benefit to being the first, being the first person to fully fill up your park um, and, and you're going to fight over that. You're going to fight to get the larger tiles and it's, it's, it's really cool. This game is almost a complete information game. There is a minor bit of randomness, a tiny little bit with shuffling up the big tiles themselves, but then you can see which one is up top and what is available on that tile before you buy it. So it's nearly a complete information game. And it can be very puzzly and very tactical and very strategic, and it is tons of fun. And I really enjoy Baron Park. This is a game I asked to play on all, uh, almost every game night recently. It's a game that I really enjoy. I'm going to play many times in the future. 
And even though the theme itself is kind of pasted on and it could have been anything, and there have been quite a few different of these puzzly Tetris type games, each one with a different pasted on theme, I like the theme too. I like the theme of building a zoo, building an animal park. It's really neat. So for all these reasons, along with just how much I enjoy this game, I give Baron Park 8 out of 10 stars. This is a really good game and I really like it a lot. But different opinions do matter. So, let's get a second opinion from Lynn. Lynn, how many stars out of 10 would you give to Baron Park? Eight. So, Lynn is right there with me. This is a two thumbs way up review from us here at the Board Game Captain. Eight stars for me. Eight stars from Lynn. We would recommend this game to everyone. So, there you have it. Have you played Baron Park yet? Does your opinion differ? Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns either on Baron Park or on this video? Please put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see us do more review and tutorial videos like it, be sure to give this video a like, share this video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the board game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And hit that little bell icon on my YouTube channel so you get notifications every time I upload a new video. And until next time, game on.